Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. I'm your host, DB. Let's get into it. Do you live in a state that has unjust bans to abortion? Plan C has got you covered. Go to plancpills.org and select your state or territory from the drop-down menu to learn how people are getting abortion pills by mail in your state, as well as information on hotlines, in-person clinics, and more. It even has a pregnancy calculator so you can determine how far along you are, which may affect which abortion options are available to you. Follow and share on social media at Plan C Pills and visit plancpills.org to learn more. Let's talk about a lube I absolutely love, UberLube. UberLube makes sex better for everyone by reducing friction and increasing pleasure. Whether you're using it for solo sex, sex with a partner, or both, UberLube has a long-lasting performance that lets skin feel skin. It has simple body and condom-friendly ingredients, is scent and color-free, dissipates when no longer needed so there's no sticky residue, and is recommended by leading doctors. Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberlube.com. Let's talk about vacation sex. If you're like me, I bet you want a little pleasure while you're away, but can't fit your entire sex toy collection in your carry-on, huh? Say hello to the brand new Magic Wand Micro. Born into such a famous family, this little wand has quite a reputation to uphold while fitting in the palm of your hand. Same magic, now in pocket size. Use code SEXEDWITHDB at Lion's Den for 15% off your Magic Wand Micro now. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. So glad to have you here listening to this really awesome and detailed episode uh, for more sex ed. And the question that my team actually wanted to answer here, because it's been coming up a lot in conversation behind the scenes, and there's been a lot of chatter about it in the last year in particular uh, on the backside of COVID. Obviously, we're still in COVID. We will probably forever be in COVID, but uh, definitely out of the out of the woods. Hopefully, of the the more intense parts of COVID. And so, the question really is, why is Gen Z having less sex? And so, there's just been, like I said, a lot of chatter about this. I think it's a recent, really common conversation topic. And this was not a question that was written in by anybody, but my team and I kind of thought through why why this might be happening and what we're interested to learn about is the research, what the studies that have been done recently say, what experts in the field are saying, and then uh, my team and I kind of have like thoughts and feelings about this, about if this matters, if it's true, why does it matter if it matters, and so, um, yeah, I'm going to go through some recent articles and, and some studies that have come out about this and then kind of share my two cents about the matter. And so first, let's start from the very beginning as who qualifies as Gen Z? I think like for me, I kind of have this image of like this baggy pants teen <laughs> with like a choker and like really hot nails and just like they're making fun of me. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of the Gen Z image that I have. But who are they really? The Collins Dictionary defined Gen Z as, quote, members of the generation of people born between the mid-1990s and the mid-2010s. The Oxford Dictionaries defined Gen Z as the, quote, group of people who were born between the late 90s and early 2010s who are regarded as being very familiar with the internet. I thought that that was just a really funny, you know, calling card of Gen Z. Like, oh yeah, no, they're super familiar with the internet, which like, yeah, totally makes sense. They grew up with it. I think me being a millennial, you know, I I grew up having like a computer room. And like, if you're listening, maybe you had this too, where we just had this huge Dell computer in our red carpeted computer room that was very small. It was maybe like four by four, (laughs) quite a small room. And we, yeah, just grew up with that. I feel like in elementary school, we 
got AOL, we were on AIM in middle school, and then it just kind of took off from there, um, 31. And so if you're listening, maybe that sounds quite familiar to our experience. But Gen Z, you know, if they're born in the late 90s, then they had cell phones in elementary school and iPhones way earlier, and they kind of skipped the whole like, what sidekick blue blackberry sidekick kind of like razor era and so another interesting definition that i found just really fascinating when making the outline for this episode is the pew research center has defined 1997 specifically as the birth year for gen z based on quote different formative experiences such as new technological and socioeconomic developments as well as growing up in a world after 911 and Pew has not specified an endpoint for Gen Z, but used 2012 as a tentative endpoint for their 2019 report. So we're kind of looking at people born between 1997 and 2012. So moving into kind of like the meat of this is like, why is Gen Z having less sex? Why why do we even care that they're maybe or maybe not having less sex? Um, let me put this into to context, right? So like, Looking at a Psychology Today article, I did think this was helpful for me to kind of frame my head around it. Because originally I was kind of like, yeah, like let people do what they want to do. Like if Gen Z is having less sex, there is some element of choice in that. Um, Although we'll see there are other factors in this research. But part of me was kind of like, why am I like trying to force this generation with my feelings into having more sex than maybe they want to, right? But this is a helpful framework for me, and it might be for you in this article I read in Psychology Today. So generally speaking, sexual activity is good for our mental health. Uh, Sex, however you like to do it, has the potential to enhance our psychological well-being, as well as a connection that we might have to a spouse or partner. Um, And I really believe, you know, based on my own experience through my magic wand masturbation experiment that I did last year, like it really did help my connection to myself and my own body. And so I think that that is helpful. And like there are actual chemical bodily changes that sexual activity can yield, right? So sexual activity can boost mood, can relieve stress, and it may serve as a protective factor against anxiety and depressive disorders. So those are some interesting tidbits that I kind of felt like were useful and important to share from the Psychology Today article. And like just kind of at a more basic uh, thing here when we're talking about sex and children, uh, perhaps there's this kind of general panic about population decline. I mean, there's, uh, you know, according to the census, the U.S. population is projected to reach a high of nearly uh, 370 million in 2080 before edging downward to 366 million in tw- uh, 2100. So long story short, you know, we care maybe that Gen Z is having less sex because we do know the effects that sexual activity can have for your body and for your experience. And maybe people are worried about this population decline. When we're talking about this recent research, um, let's just kind of talk about the sources of this recent research. And I just want to shout out our wonderful producer, Sadie, for doing really immaculate work here on kind of finding some of these studies and parsing out some of these key findings and highlights that I'm going to be sharing with you all today in this episode. So a few studies, um, and we'll link all of these in in the description of this episode if you want to check them out yourself. But there is UCLA's California Health Interview Survey, which is the nation's largest state health survey and a critical source of data on Californians, as well as on the state's various racial and ethnic groups. So take that with some sort of grain of salt if some of that information is coming from California exclusively. Center for Scholars and Storytellers is also at UCLA. They they did a Teens and Screens 2023 report that we're going to be pulling from in this episode. And then there are also studies in some of these articles by the CDC and by the University of Chicago. And like I said, uh, we will we will link out these these articles so that you're able to kind of see for yourself like what what's going on here. What do you need to know from this research? So let's first go through an article in the LA Times that came out in August of 2023 titled A Failure to Launch, Why Young People Are Having Less Sex, right? So here's some kind of key takeaways here. There is kind of this shift in sexual behavior, right? So millennials and Gen Zers are engaging in less sexual activity with fewer partners compared to previous generations. 
And some factors contributing to this trend include technology, heavy academic schedules, and a slower transition into adulthood. So this is kind of like people are moving out of their parents' homes later. Like maybe they're they're just hitting those milestones a little later in life. So this research from the UCLA California Health Interview Survey indicates that the number of young Californians that are aged 18 to 30 that were reporting no sexual partners in the prior year reached a decade high of 38% in 2021. So that essentially means, let me break this down. So people aged 18 to 30 in California that had reported no sexual partners in the past year was 30, there were 38% of them in 2021. And this trend is also observed nationally. Um, so that to me is really fascinating that in uh, for an entire year, folks are not having sexual experiences with somebody else. Although, little caveat of what I'll probably talk about later, does that mean they're not having sex with themselves? We don't know. And if that's true, then that is also interesting. But I just would love to see kind of side by side masturbation studies versus studies around people having sex with other people. Maybe that's a future episode. So like we said before, delayed milestones, there's this de decline in sexual activity that's potentially attributed to this slow life factor. People are delaying these major life milestones, such as obtaining driver's licenses, going to college, moving out of their parents' homes. This is happening later and later for people. And then, of course, the impact of COVID-19, right? The pandemic has influenced social interactions, including dating, and the decline in sexual activity predates COVID-19, but continues throughout COVID-19. However, the pandemic has made dating more challenging due to increased reliance on technology for social interactions, right? And this includes like the changing dating landscape. Like when I was when I was in college, I had just come back from being abroad my junior year into senior year. And that's when Tinder like first started. Like dating apps were not a thing the first three years that I was in college. I can't imagine what Gen Z is experiencing when it comes to like every one of their peers or most of them are probably on the apps if they're single and trying to fuck, trying to smash. Um, and dating apps and online communication have transformed really how young people have formed relationships um, with in-person interactions kind of becoming less essential for intimacy. So in terms of the reasons for abstinence, right? Like the reasons for abstaining from sex may vary, including focusing on education and career, maybe there's stress, lack of libido, concerns around STIs. And then there's also societal pressures and cultural shifts that play ro different roles in shaping attitude towards sex. And when we're looking at the social implications of this, right, there are practical benefits to delayed sexual activity. Um, like we said before, like reduced risk of STIs and unplanned pregnancies. Um, there are also concerns about the impact on intimacy and relationships. Um, and as I kind of mentioned in the beginning of the episode, what this means for declining birth rates. So th those are kind of some some just general key takeaways from this article in the LA Times. Uh, as you're kind of noticing, like there's no kind of like hard and fast rule about this. And this is something I'll mention later in the episode, but this research in many ways is just beginning. So it's it's more things to think through rather than to think like, oh, wow, this is like for sure why. Um, this is all really new within the past couple of years research. So again, just important to frame it in that way. In a world that constantly encourages you to change, it's bold to just be yourself. Sexual expression and satisfaction are different for everybody. So rather than conforming to others, focus on falling in love with who you are. Lion's Den sources the very best products to help you find what you like and help you feel confident expressing your sexual desires. You can get 15% off in-store and online using code SEXEDWITHDB at lionsden.com to begin exploring everything about yourself. Follow them on social at Lion's Den Adult on Instagram and TikTok. Hey! 
Hey, I'm Gwenna Lathlin, but you probably know me as Mama Cusses on TikTok and Instagram. And I'm Tori Phantom, also known as Tori Phantom on TikTok and Instagram. And we want to tell you about our brand new podcast, Childproof, from Betches Media. Parenting is hard, but it's even harder when you feel alone. That's why we created Childproof, a parenting chat show for when you're craving adult conversation and are surrounded by tiny humans. And on Childproof, we'll try to figure out the do's, don'ts, and what ifs of modern parenthood. We have been friends for years, so we want to use this show as an opportunity to compare notes, share stories, and grow as parents at the same time. So tune in every Wednesday as we share our experiences through a mix of one-on-one conversations, guest appearances, and input from you, our listeners. That's right. You, you personally, where you are right now, you can be a listener. Subscribe right now wherever you're listening. That's Childproof from Betches Media. Let's talk about an article in The Guardian that came out in October 2023 titled, Almost Half of Gen Z Viewers Want Less Sex on Screen, Study Finds. It's so interesting. So folks who were in this study had a preference for friendship over romance. So Gen Z viewers, according to this study from UCLA, from the Center of Scholars and Storytellers, desire less sexual content and more focus on platonic relationships. And they express a preference for storylines that reflect lives like their own, emphasizing friendship over these romantic relationships. So if Gen Z is having less sex, then this would track, right? Like they're, this totally makes sense. Like if I'm a member of Gen Z and I am having less sex and I want to view relationships that I'm actually having, like friendships on screen, then this would compel me to to say, oh, I want to see something on screen that's more like my own. I'm not really interested in seeing sex on screen. So maybe it's kind of this like self-fulfilling prophecy that like, because Gen Z wants to see less sex on screen, maybe if media makers listen to that, then they would see less sex and then not want to have sex. And then maybe, I don't know, that's just really fascinating to think about. So what did the survey say? This survey had 1500 adolescents aged 10 to 24 And it revealed that a majority, so nearly 52% of respondents between 13 and 24, wanted to see more content centered around friendships and platonic relationships. And additionally, this is really interesting to me, nearly half, so like 48% just about, felt that sex was unnecessary for the plot in most TV shows and movies, while over 44% believed that romance was overused in media. Like, this is wild. I feel like when I was this age, like when I was a teen, I ate that shit up. I was just like very excited to see romance on screen. I think it allowed me to kind of like picture like this this really unrealistic life. It's toxic now that I'm really thinking about it. But I think like there may be some middle ground of like healthy, realistic relationships. I don't know. I'm really, I'm really thinking this through. I feel like I should transition to directing here. Uh Okay, let's let's talk through this. So there's also dissatisfaction with tropes, right? So adolescents express dissatisfaction with common tropes in media, such as the expectation that male-female friendships would inevitably lead to romance. They highlighted a lack of representation of platonic relationships in American cinema, which is so interesting because I feel like some of my favorite TV shows of all time are all about platonic friendships, like Broad City and Pen15. And I wonder if Gen Z is interested in those shows or if those are squarely for millennials. A couple more things here, and then I want to go into some of the counters to these articles. So several studies, including those by the CDC and the University of Chicago, have reported a decline in sexual activity among Gen Z individuals and kind of just like highlighting what the UCLA study was sharing, right? It's attributed to various factors, including the isolation experience during COVID-19 And the authors note that isolation of COVID-19 has contributed to Gen Z's prioritization of friendship. So clinical studies on the, quote, friendship recession and the epidemic of loneliness further support this observation. And like, this totally makes sense to me. Like, if people are from COVID, they're isolated, they're like, not really like, in a good headspace they mental health is on the decline like this is making sense to me why folks would be more interested in this generation and like exploring friendship because of loneliness and because of the desire for connection rather than romantic intimacy if that feels like scarier or more challenging and at the same time 
There are also counters to these articles. Um, One in Slate titled, What Everyone Gets Wrong About Gen Z and the Sex It's Allegedly Not Having is really fascinating to me. The authors feel that the studies out there are based on thin evidence and don't feel like there's enough research about why this may be happening and that we need longitudinal data uh, about the sexual attitudes of Gen Z, which, yeah, more the more data, the better. And finally, and potentially for this podcast, most importantly, question mark, we need to understand just how Gen Z is defining sex, right? In a recent Business Insider article that yours truly was quoted in, titled, What Does Virginity Mean to Gen Z? Not Much?, Uh, Gen Z is really challenging the concept of virginity, right? Like Gen Z, if you're born between 1997 and 2012, some of those people have never had sex yet. And they are challenging this notion of what it means to, quote, lose your virginity, right? Like an idea that's been used to shame women for having sex and attempt to keep them pure or clean. And the traditional definition of virginity which is vaginal intercourse with a partner with a penis, leaves out a wide swath of LGBTQIA plus people who don't have those types of sexual interactions. So several of the Gen Zers that Business Insider spoke with said that the concept of virginity just didn't matter to them that much. And other people said that their experience of, quote, losing it was overblown. Here are my two cents on all of this. I just threw a lot of information at you based on kind of the research and my own biases and my own thoughts and me being a sex educator. But my two cents is like, maybe Gen Z is having less sex. Maybe they're also defining it differently. Maybe they're lonelier, but maybe they invest more in platonic love and friendships. More research is definitely needed. And if we're opening up the definition of what sex entails, that is definitely a good thing. Like, I want to see more side-by-side information from this experience um, of reading this research and think like, okay, well, what about their masturbation habits? Like, is this only when it comes to experiences with a partner? Or is Gen Z also just better at knowing what they want because they are masturbating more or because they're masturbating before that they're getting into sexual experiences or activity with a partner? Um, Masturbation and knowing what you like before you engage with a partner where you're able to communicate, this is what I want. This is what I like. This is what feels good for me. I'm confident in using a sex toy in the bedroom. Like Gen Z is also changing the game for that. And I feel like that wasn't the case for the generation before, for millennials. Um, And in some cultures and in some areas of the country, in America specifically, of course, masturbation is still something that's very, like feels shameful for people. There's a lot of stigma still. But I do think this is, and I hope that this is shifting and changing um, with better representations in media, with people being able to listen to podcasts like this and read books and really understand that like pleasure is not the enemy. And so that is the episode on why is Gen Z having less sex? And thank you for listening. Love y'all. Our creator, host, and executive producer is me, Danielle Bezalow. Our producer and communications lead is Catherine Cohen. Our producer and communications coordinator is Sadie Leegi. Our marketing coordinator is Kate Fiala. Our music theme is by Hook Sounds. Thanks so much to our featured guests, partners, and listeners. Want to partner with us? Email us at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. For more sex ed content, follow us on Instagram at sex ed with DB podcast and on TikTok at sex ed with DB. Want to rep us with some brand new sex ed with DB merch? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash merch to check it out now. See you next time.